Hello and welcome to another episode of Z Notes Live. Today we have Mr. Fahad with us and we will be discussing another AS level chemistry topic. Over to you, Mr. Fahad. Thank you, Ashwarya. Uh, today we'll be looking at redox reactions. And uh, this is a very important topic in AS level chemistry, even though it's not very long, but it still confuses a lot of students. And it is extremely important, especially when it comes to paper one, the multiple choice paper, uh, because uh, uh, for some reason or the other, this is the topic that throws up the most questions that takes longer than a minute or two to actually solve. So stay tuned and let's get through this topic. All right, so redox reactions basically involve um, certain processes that you've already studied in IGCSE, right? Such as the gain or loss of electrons, of oxygen, of hydrogen, etc. So we're going to look at those definitions briefly before we get into the uh, meat of this topic, which is actually the balancing of redox equations. All right, so let's get right into it with the uh, simple definitions of these two processes, oxidation and reduction. Right, so when we say that something is oxidized, right, when oxidation occurs, it means either of these four definitions, right? So it could either gain oxygen, or it could lose hydrogen, or it could lose electrons, or it could increase its oxidation state or number. Oxidation state or number, now what this is, this is, uh, you could say kind of like charge of an atom uh, in a particular formula, and how we assign this value of charge how do we know it's going to be positive or negative? We're going to go into a lot more detail uh, a little later in this topic, okay? So for example, we have this reaction between iron three oxide and carbon monoxide. So over here, we can see that the carbon monoxide is being oxidized to carbon dioxide. And the reason why is that CO is gaining one oxygen atom to become CO2. So the gain of oxygen is there. So that is how it is being oxidized. Uh, and another way in which it is being oxidized is that the oxidation state of carbon in carbon monoxide is plus two, right? So we know that oxygen usually has an oxidation state of minus two. So carbon over here will be plus two. And over here, we have two oxygen atoms. So this will be two into minus two. That will be minus four. So carbon over here to balance out that oxidation number to make it zero because this is a compound has to be neutral. So you can see that it's going from plus two to plus four. So carbon atoms have been oxidized in that sense. And obviously when uh, a carbon atom is increasing its oxidation state, that means it is losing electrons, right? Its positive charge is increasing. That means the negative electrons are being lost, right? So over here, you can see that each carbon atom loses two electrons. So that means three carbon atoms will lose a total of six electrons. So that is how oxidation is taking place in this equation. Now, reduction is the total opposite, right? In all four senses of the word, right? So if oxidation means the gain of oxygen, this means the loss of oxygen. And the gain of hydrogen, the gain of electrons, or the decrease in oxidation number, right? So now in this case, it's gonna be iron three oxide that is going to be reduced to simple iron, right? So it is losing this oxygen over here. It's becoming simple iron metal, all right? And if you look at the oxidation states, then the oxidation state of iron in Fe2O3 is plus three, right? Oxygen again, this is going to be minus two for each oxygen atom, and there are three of them, so this is going to be minus six. So we need uh, two x over here, such that two x minus six will give us sum of zero, right? So when you add up oxidation states of different atoms in a compound, they have to add up to zero. So x over here will be positive three, and over here, the case of iron, because it's by itself, it's not combined with anything else. So this will be zero, right? So oxidation state goes down from plus three to zero for iron atoms. And so it's the iron 
that is being reduced, right? And over here, you can see that each iron atom is going to gain three electrons so that its oxidation state goes down from plus three to zero, right? And there are two iron atoms. So this is going to be the calculation, right? So two iron atoms, each of which gains three electrons for a total of six electrons gained. So in the previous slide, we saw that six electrons were lost. Now six electrons are being gained by something else. So the, there has to be a balance between the electrons lost by whatever is being oxidized and the electrons gained by whatever is being reduced or whatever is undergoing reduction, okay? So the combination of these two processes is called a redox or redox reaction, right? So these two processes always occur at the same time. And by the way, out of these four definitions, uh, the gain of electrons or the decrease in oxidation state or number in the case of reduction or the opposite in the case of oxidation, these two will always apply, right? Oxygen and hydrogen may or may not be involved in the reaction, but it could still be a redox reaction if these two definitions are applied, all right? Okay, so as a result, in this equation, we have two species. One is the oxidizing agent, which is iron three oxide. Now, this is the species that itself gets reduced and it causes whatever it is reacting with to get oxidized itself, right? And carbon monoxide is the reducing agent because it reduces something else and in the process gets oxidized itself, right? So carbon monoxide, it reduces the Fe2O3 to simple Fe, right? It causes this reduction, so it's the reducing agent. And likewise, the Fe2O3, it causes the carbon monoxide to be oxidized to CO2, right? It causes this oxidation, and so it is the oxidizing agent because it oxidizes that something else, right? So... These were some very simple definitions, very simple terminologies. So now let's get to this oxidation number rules, right? So oxidation number basically just shows the degree of oxidation of an atom or an ion, right? Basically what this means is the higher the oxidation number, the more oxidized that atom or ion is, right? And these could be either positive, negative, or zero. And uh, these numbers can be found using certain rules, all right? Again, oxidation numbers are kind of like charges, but that really depends on the rules uh, by which we apply on certain compounds and certain polyatomic ions. And the charge can change for each element depending on its situation. So let's take a look at how that happens. Right, so first rule is that the oxidation numbers of atoms and elements, right? They're always gonna be zero. For example, we have magnesium metal, the oxidation number will be zero. Chlorine over here. Now, because this chlorine is not combined with any other element, so both chlorine atoms will have an oxidation number of zero. And over here, it's sulfur. All eight sulfur atoms will have an oxidation number of zero, right? Because again, these elements are not combined with any other elements in these molecules. Rule number two. So the oxidation numbers of atoms or ions, they depend on the position of the element in the periodic table. So for example, group one and two, these metals will always have an oxidation number of plus one and plus two respectively, right? And hydrogen will pretty much always have an oxidation number of plus one except when it is bonded to metals, right? So for example, in the case of uh, MgH2 over here, we know that magnesium is a group two metal, so it will have an oxidation number of plus two, right? So hydrogen over here, because it is bonded to a metal, it will not have an oxidation number of plus one. What we will do is we will assign it an oxidation number of minus one because two atoms of hydrogen times minus one, when you add these two up, 
you will get a zero sum for a compound. And that's, by the way, a rule that we will look at later as well, okay? Oxidation number of oxygen will always be minus two, as we've already seen in the case of uh, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide and iron three oxide, except in peroxide ions over here. Because you have two oxygen atoms, and they both combine to give you a minus two charge in this ion. So each oxygen atom in this case will have a minus one oxidation state. So two times minus one will give us minus two over here. And over here, oxygen difluoride, oxygen will actually have a plus two oxidation state because fluorine, it's in group 17, it will always have a minus one oxidation state. So two into minus one. So when you add these up, this will give you zero. And over here, the only reason oxygen has plus two because it is less electronegative than fluorine, right? The more electronegative element in a compound will get the negative oxidation number. That's a rule that we'll see later, right? Fluorine, as we've already seen, will always have an oxidation number of minus one. No exceptions to this because fluorine is the most electronegative element. So it will always have the negative oxidation number of minus one because it's in group 17, right? Other halogens will also have a minus one oxidation number like chlorine, bromine, and iodine, except when they're bonded to more electronegative atoms, right? So for example, over here in HCl, hydrogen is less electronegative, so it will get a plus one oxidation state. As we saw, that's the usual for hydrogen. For chlorine, it's going to be minus one. They add up to give you zero. But in the case of HOCl, we know that oxygen is more electronegative than both of these guys. So this will be minus two. Hydrogen, as usual, will be plus one. So to give a zero sum, chlorine will also be plus one over here. Right. And this rule that we've already seen, the sum of oxidation numbers of all atoms in a compound will be equal to zero, right? That's what we've been doing so far. Right. Now for ions, the oxidation number of the ion is just equal to its charge, right? So for example, in Fe3+, plus, these iron three ions, it's gonna be plus three, right? The charge is there, that's going to be the oxidation number, simple enough. In the case of polyatomic ions, uh, we are going to add up the oxidation numbers of the atoms involved, and that is going to give you the charge on the ion. For example, in the case of carbonate ions, we have oxygen, three oxygen atoms, three times minus two, minus two is the usual oxidation number for oxygen, right? And uh, for carbon, we don't know the oxidation number for this, so we're going to assume it's X, we add it to three to minus two, this will give us minus two, which is the charge on this polyatomic ion. So when we solve this, X, is going to become positive four. So that is how you find the oxidation number of carbon in the carbonate ion. Now, the fourth rule is the negative oxidation number will always be given to the more electronegative element, right? Uh, I've already said this before, but let's look at another example. So let's say we have SO3, right? Now, over here in these two, oxygen is more electronegative, so it will become minus two, so three and two, minus two, that's going to be minus six, and sulfur, we're going to assume it's X, and when we add up these two, it's going to give us zero because this is a compound, it's neutral. So X over here will become positive six for sulfur, okay? All right, so let's say we want to find the oxidation number of sulfur and H2SO4 by applying all of these rules, all right? So we know that out of all three elements, oxygen is the most electronegative, so it will get its negative oxidation number of negative two, right? So I'm gonna have four times negative two for the oxygen. 
And we know that hydrogen is the least electronegative. So it's going to get its usual oxidation state of plus one, right? So two into plus one, right? It only gets a different oxidation state if it's bonded to metals. And over here, it's not bonded to any metal. Now for sulfur, because this is just one sulfur atom, we're going to assume this is X, right? And we're going to add up all of these to zero because this is a compound. And when we solve this equation, X turns out to be positive six. And that is the oxidation number of sulfur in H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. Now for nitrogen in the nitrite ion, NO2 negative, this is a little simpler. The only difference is we have an overall charge, right? So oxygen over here is more electronegative, so it gets its minus two oxidation state. Nitrogen, we don't know its oxidation number, so this is going to be X. So when we add this up, now the sum is going to be minus one because this is an ion over here. It has an overall charge. So we add up oxidation numbers to get the charge on the ion. So X over here turns out to be positive three. This is going to be the oxidation state of nitrogen. Now over here, the nitrite ion can also be called the nitrate three ion, right? Now the thing about this uh, last bit in yellow over here is that the eight tells us that uh, we have oxygen atoms present in this polyatomic ion, right? The nitre, part over here tells us there's nitrogen, the eight tells us there's oxygen as well, right? And this three over here tells us that this is the oxidation state of the nitrogen atom in this ion, right? So we know that this is NO2 negative. The nitrogen over here has an oxidation state given by this Roman numeral, which is positive three, right? And the eight part over here tells us that there's going to be some oxygen atoms involved in this ion. Uh, similarly, in sulfate, right? In sulfate, we have a sulfur atom given by sulf, and the eight tells us there's going to be oxygen atoms as well. Okay. So now the thing is that uh, over here, we're not going to apply this rule to OH negative, right? I mean, the uh, if you did, then you would have called it hydrate, right? Uh, hydro for hydrogen and eight for oxygen. But the thing is that over here, because we only have one oxygen atom and not multiple oxygen atoms. So we're going to buck the trend a little and say this is the hydroxide ion. Okay. Right. So now over here, we have another ion that contains... Uh, nitrogen and oxygen. So you could also call this nitrate, right? Because of nitrogen and oxygen, but the difference is in the oxidation state of nitrogen. Now over here, to save us some time, I'm gonna tell you guys that the oxidation state of nitrogen is plus five. So I'm going to not call this just nitrate. I'm going to say nitrate five, right? This is the nitrate five ion. The five, the Roman numeral, gives us the oxidation state of nitrogen in this ion to differentiate it from nitrate three, all right? And uh, we also use Roman numerals to give the oxidation states of transition elements because we all know transition elements can have more than one oxidation state, right? So for example, FeCl2, iron, is, an ox is a transition element. Over here, the oxidation state will be plus two. So uh, this is iron two chloride. And over here, this is gonna be plus three. So this is iron three chloride, right? To differentiate between the two iron chlorides uh, in terms of the oxidation state of the transition metal in them. Right, and uh, over here, there's some compounds that uh, have the same elements, but different oxidation states for one of them, right? So for example, we have N2O, we have NO, and we have NO2. Now all of them, you could call them nitrogen oxide, right? Because there's nitrogen and oxygen as well. How do I differentiate between them? 
One way to do that is to talk about the oxidation state of nitrogen. So in N2O, it's going to be plus one for the nitrogen. So it's going to be nitrogen one oxide. In NO, the oxidation state is plus two for nitrogen. So it's going to be nitrogen two oxide. And for NO2, it's going to be nitrogen four oxide because of the plus four oxidation state of nitrogen, right? Uh, in case you didn't know how to uh, calculate these values, pause the video and try to work it out for yourself. Right, so over here, uh, we could use the same method uh, for basically talking about the oxidation states of certain elements within ions, right? You can have ions as well as compounds that have the same two elements, but uh, you differentiate them on the basis of the oxidation state of one of them, right? So we just did that for nitrogen oxides. Now, in terms of ions, we have chlorate one, right? So this contains chlorine and oxygen, right? And then we have chlorate five, again, chlorine and oxygen, but the difference is the oxidation state of chlorine, right? In, in this case, it's plus one, and in this case, it is plus five. And finally, we also have uh, the naming of uh, organic acid, inorganic acids, right? So uh, over here, we have H2SO3, which is an acid that contains hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. And then you have another acid over here that contains the same three elements. But the difference is the oxidation state of sulfur. So we take the name sulfur, add an ick over here to tell us that this is going to go in the favor of an acid compound. And then we have four over here. That'll just the oxidation state. So it's going to be plus four over here. So we know hydrogen is the least electronegative. So this is going to be two into plus one. Oxygen is the most electronegative. So this is going to be three to minus two. So to make sure that the sum is zero for all of these, because this is a compound, sulfur should have a plus four oxidation state. And that is what is shown over here. And H2SO4, we've already seen that the sulfur has a plus six oxidation state. So we could have it as sulfuric six acid. All right. So we have the name of the element with the differing oxidation state, followed by ic, ic, and then in parentheses, you have the Roman numeral telling the oxidation number of that element, and then you have acid, right? So this could also work for uh, other acids like nitric acid, for example, or phosphoric acid. Right, now getting to the uh, topic of putting all of these rules together to balance equations, right? Now, balancing redox reactions um, happens by looking at the total increase in oxidation number and balancing it with the total decrease in oxidation number of some other element, all right? So for example, over here, we have an equation that we need to balance, right? So we have manganate seven ions over here that are reacting with iron two ions to make manganese two and iron three. So we need to find the uh, balancing of this equation using changes in oxidation numbers. So over here for MnO4 negative, you know that oxygen will be minus two. So it's gonna be four to minus two and Mn over here is X right? Now, if we add these up, we're going to get minus one for this ion. So x is going to be plus seven. So I'm going to write this over here. And by the way, the name of the ion should have saved you from this calculation because manganate tells us that this ion is going to have manganese and eight tells us there's going to be oxygen. And the seven tells us the oxidation state of manganese over here already. So I didn't even need to do this calculation, right? Don't be like me, guys. Anyway, so over here, Mn2 plus has an oxidation state of plus 2. So you can see that manganese is being reduced. And it's going from 
plus 7 to plus 2. So the total decrease in oxidation number is 5, right? Now, in the case of iron, now this is going to be oxidized from plus 2 to plus 3. So the increase is just of 1. Now, I need to make sure that uh, the increase and the decrease in oxidation number are equal. So how do I do this? How do I make the increase equal to the decrease? I'm going to multiply the increase by 5. Right? So that gives us the total increase. In other words, what I'm saying is, if I have 5 iron 2 ions that are oxidized to 5 iron 3 ions, that means the total increase will be 1 times 5. So over here, for each MnO4 negative, we're going to have 5 iron 2 ions that are oxidized. Right? So this is going to give me 1 Mn2 plus and 5 Fe3 plus, right? And over here, now to balance out the hydrogen and the oxygen, this is going to be pretty simple. On the left-hand side, we have four oxygen atoms. So we need four oxygen atoms on the right. And over here, we have eight hydrogen atoms on the right-hand side. So we need eight hydrogen atoms on the left-hand side, and we have the balanced equation. All right. So this is basically going over the entire method. In case you didn't understand what was happening, you can pause the video and read this explanation. Right. Now, a different kind of redox reaction is disproportionation. Now, this is actually a little weird, right? Because over here, I mean, so far, we have seen that one element is going to be oxidized and another element is going to be reduced. In this case, though, it's going to be some atoms of the same element that are going to be oxidized and reduced at the same time. For example, over here in hydrogen peroxide, uh, we've already seen that oxygen has an oxidation state of minus one in this case, right? It's one of those exceptions for the oxidation number of oxygen. Now in water, H2O, this is going to be minus 2, right? So what this means is that two oxygen atoms have gone from minus 1 to minus 2. So two oxygen atoms have been reduced, right? So if you look at oxygen atoms, right? So two of them have gone from minus 1 to minus 2, right? So that means that the total decrease is going to be 1. That's a decrease of 1 for each oxygen times 2 for the number of oxygens. So that's going to be 2. Then over here in the oxygen molecule, we have an oxidation state of 0 because this is an element. It's not combined with any other element. So both oxygen atoms are 0. So in this case, we have two oxygen atoms in hydrogen peroxide going from minus 1 to 0. So oxidation state is increasing. So the total increase in this case is going to be an increase of 1 for each oxygen multiplied by 2. That gives us 2. So the total increase and the total decrease are equal. And it's just two oxygen atoms that are being reduced and two oxygen atoms that are being oxidized at the same time. So that's why it's disproportionation, all right? Even the name is a mouthful, and even the concept is a little difficult to get. So bear with me. Right, so over here we have another example. So chlorine reacts with water to give us two compounds, okay? Chlorine has an oxidation state of zero because this is an element. It's not combined with any other elements. In HCl, we know that hydrogen is less electronegative. This is going to be plus one and chloride being more electronegative will be minus one. And we already worked out the oxidation states in HOCl, right, earlier in this topic. So we have plus one. So you can see over here that one chlorine has gone from zero to minus one, so that was reduction. And another chlorine went from zero to plus one, 
that's oxidation. So one chlorine atom is being reduced and one is being oxidized. So the total increase and the total decrease are both the same, which is just one, all right? Okay, so we have a complex question which involves disproportionation and balancing equations, right? So let's take a look at this one. So we have uh, this particular ion, right? Which is a kind of chromate ion. And we have hydrogen ions that react to give us all these guys, right? So let's work out the oxidation states of chromium. So over here at oxygen, it, this is gonna be four times minus two. At chromium, it's gonna be X because it is unknown. Add up the oxidation states to get minus three. So this is gonna give us X equals plus five. For CrO4, two negative, this is going to be four times minus two for the oxygen plus X for the chromium. This gives us minus two for the ion. And so over here, X will be plus six, right? And over here, chromium is plus three. So you can see that some chromium is being oxidized from plus five to plus six, and some of it is being reduced from plus five to plus three, okay? So over here, the total increase is gonna be from plus five to plus six, so that is going to be one. And the total decrease is gonna be from plus five to plus three, so that is two. Now to make these two equal, I need to multiply the total increase by two. So what that means is that two chromium atoms are gonna go from plus five to plus six. So that is why CrO4, two negative will have two ions, right? So that out of the three chromiums, two of them are oxidized and one of them will be reduced. So this will be one over here. And now to balance out the rest, uh, we know that on the left-hand side, we have 12 oxygen atoms. So that's three times four, that's 12 oxygen atoms. And on the right-hand side, we have two into four, so that's eight oxygen atoms. So we need four more, so this will be 4H2O. And now because we have eight hydrogen atoms on the right, so this will be eight on the left. So that gives us the entire balancing. Chromium is being disproportionated Two chromiums are being oxidized and one is being reduced. All right, this is the complete explanation. In case you didn't understand, pause the video and watch this. All right, now finally, after all these concepts, it's time for the workout, all right? So I've only selected a few uh, paper one questions because paper two questions tend to be very simple. When it comes to redox reactions, so it's paper one you need to focus on for this topic. Right, so first question, we have manganese containing species in this column, and we have nitrogen containing species in this column. And what we need to do is calculate the oxidation states of manganese and nitrogen and compare the results. Basically add up the two oxidation states and get the sum which is the smallest in all of these options. So this is that kind of irritating MCQ in which you have to go through all the options, right? And then decide which one is correct. Okay, so over here at MNCl4, um, we know that chlorine is more electronegative. So this is gonna be four times minus one since it's in group 17. And manganese is gonna be X, add this up to give you zero. So manganese is going to be plus four over here. Nitrogen, because it's not bonded to anything else, it's an element, so it's going to be zero. So I'm going to be tallying sums over here. This is going to be four plus zero, which is four for option A. For option B, we know that the carbonate ion CO3 to negative has a minus two charge, right? So I don't need to go and calculate the oxidation state of carbon, and then the oxidation state of manganese. Make life a little simpler now. 
So this is going to be plus 2 for manganese to balance out the charges, right? So this is plus 2. For NO2, negative. Uh, now the thing is that we've already calculated the oxidation state of nitrogen in this particular case. If you remember, this was plus 3, right? So plus 2 and plus 3 will give us 5, right? So already option B is out because it's not the smallest sum, okay? Now in K2MNO4, we know that potassium is in group one, so it will always have a plus one oxidation state. So this is gonna be two in two, plus one, right? And O4, this is gonna be four times minus two. And manganese over here will be X, right? So you add these up to give zero. So you have two minus eight, it's minus 6, so x is going to be plus 6 over here. And in this case, you have four hydrogens, right? So four hydrogens, that's less electronegative, so that's going to be 4 times plus 1, and x is for nitrogen, and this is going to give add up to give us plus 1 because this is an ion. So x over here will be minus 3. So 6 minus 3 is going to be 3, right so that means option a is now out now let's get to option d so oh over here we know that hydroxide is always minus one so we're just going to multiply it three by minus one and over here manganese is x this adds up to give you zero so x is going to be plus three and in the case of nh2oh oxygen is going to be minus two the three hydrogens are going to give you plus three, right? So because they're less electronegative, so I'm just going to write this as three into plus one. And we have a nitrogen over here, which is X. This is going to give you zero. So this is going to be minus one for nitrogen. All right. So plus three minus one, that gives us two and we have the correct option, which is option D, with the smallest sum. And it, just when you thought that it, wouldn't, uh, it wasn't enough that uh, you had to go through all these options, you had to have option D as the last option, which ended up being correct. You didn't have to. You, you didn't have to go on till the end. You couldn't stop. And it took more time. Anyway. All right, so over here, we need to balance this equation and we don't just have to balance all of it. We have to just get A and C, right? A and C are the coefficients for MnO4 and MnO4, just the difference of the charges. Anyway, so over here, we have MnO4 two negative. This is gonna be four times minus two for the oxygens, X for the manganese this is going to be minus two right so x over here turns out to be plus six all right now over here in mno4 negative we know this is going to be plus seven right we've already dealt with it a lot and mno2 this is going to be plus four right you can work this out yourself hopefully okay so you can see that manganese over here is being disproportionated, right? So Mn is going from plus 6 to plus 7. That's an increase of 1. And it's also going from plus 6 to plus 4. So that's a decrease of 2. So in order to get the increase and the decrease equal, what we will do is uh, multiply the increase by two. So when you multiply all of this by two, so that means that uh, two manganese will be oxidized. So over here, C will have to be two, and A will be the total number of manganese available. So there's two that are being oxidized, and there's one that is gonna be reduced so that's going to be two plus one that gives us three 
So A equals three and C equals two. So that's gonna give us option B. Now, finally over here, we have a transition metal ion that reacts with acidified dichromate six to form M4 plus and Cr3 plus. So to correctly represent this equation, um, what we're gonna do is M, we know this goes from plus two to plus four. So that's an increase of two. And in the case of CR, and uh, over here, we know that this is dichromate six. So it's going from plus six in this particular ion over here, which contains chromium and oxygen. That comes from the dichromate name. And it's going to CR three plus. So it's going to be plus three. So that's a decrease of three. Now, in order to equate these two, uh, we have to go to the LCM right so two will have to be multiplied by three and three will need to be multiplied by two okay so because each dichromate six already contains two chromiums so you only need one cr2o7 and that's what all the options give you right now over here we have three m's that are going to be converted from plus two to plus four and so it's going to be option C that is correct. I don't even need to check the, the rest of the equation because all of them have 14 hydrogen ions and seven water molecules and two chromium three plus. All right. Okay. So this question over here is a bit of a monster, right? So let's get through this one. So we have a redox reaction taking place between hydroxyl ammonium ions, this guy and iron three ions over here and so the products are going to be fe2 plus h plus water and a compound of nitrogen that we don't know yet all right so in this equation we have this molar ratio one ratio two for the hydroxyl ammonium to iron three in other words what this means is you have one mole of nh3oh positive plus now you're going to have two moles of Fe3+. So these are going to react to give you two moles of Fe2+, that are gained from the two moles of Fe3+, being reduced. Plus you have H plus ions and water and a compound of nitrogen that we do not know. Now the thing is that Fe3+, is going to Fe2+. So there will be a total decrease. Well, for each iron, it's going to be a decrease of one because there are two of them. It's going to be two. Now the nitrogen over here, we need to find its oxidation number. So for oxygen, it's minus two. For the four hydrogen atoms, the three and the one over here, it's going to be four times plus one. And for nitrogen, it's going to be X, right? And we add this up to give you plus one for the ion. So X over here turns out to be minus one, right? So nitrogen over here is going to go from minus one to some other oxidation number. And there's only going to be one nitrogen atom, right? So the total increase will be for that one nitrogen atom. Total decrease was, uh, was of two. So the total increase will be of two as well and so for the nitrogen it's going to go from minus one it's going to increase by two to match the total decrease it's going to go to plus one so now you need to find a nitrogen containing compound in these options that has a plus one oxidation state for nitrogen and uh, without bothering to go through all the options i'm going to go straight to option b over here, oxygen has a minus two oxidation state. For nitrogen, it's going to be two times plus one. So when I add this up, I'm going to get zero for the compound. And so option B is actually going to be the correct one. For the others, it's going to be minus three over here. It's going to be plus two and plus four. And we need an oxidation state of plus one, which is N2O. 
All right. So the final product is going to be N2O. And uh, for this question, we don't really need to balance out the entire equation as such, right? So I'm going to leave it till here. All right, so we looked at uh, redox reactions, how to assign oxidation numbers, how to use these to balance redox equations, and we took a look at disproportionation as well and what that means for redox reactions. So if you have any questions, do drop them down in the comments. That's it from my side. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Mr. Fahad, for your time. See you all next week with another episode. Thank you.